Warzone Mobile is here, and it's given us a taste of the dance that we haven't had since the early days of 2020, and it's finally time to talk about the return of Verdansk. It's been widely touted, widely rumoured, and pretty much considered now that this is going to happen at some point in 2024 for the major release of Warzone, and has already returned in Warzone Mobile. But what will Verdansk look like by the time it reaches you in 2024, compared to what it looked like in 2020? And that's what we're here to talk about today. This is interesting for a couple of reasons, because we know that the developers of Warzone Mobile intend on seasonal updates to change Verdansk for how the map flows, how it plays, potentially even POIs and the general design could be something that's in a state of flow for a while. We also know that the design philosophy for Warzone has changed a lot between Caldera and Urzikstan, and even Urzikstan and Verdansk. Although they share some similar properties, for the most part, the general thought process and emphasis on how they were designed is completely different. Buildings work differently, entrances and exits to buildings work differently, and in Verdansk there was a bigger emphasis on larger POIs and less buildings, whereas in Urzikstan there are less POIs but lots of buildings. For Warzone to be brought into 2024, some fundamental things are going to have to change about the map. And it's worth talking about it in this video today because these are the things that I think the developers will actually go for, as opposed to things that I think are just personal preferences. Now, I have a lot of personal preferences about Warzone, especially Verdansk, because I didn't think it was all that good a map. But there's no denying that there was a certain iconicness to its POIs, and it did manage to make an achievably good Warzone experience from the get-go. But things have changed, and more importantly, Warzone's gameplay has matured and modernized, and there's a lot in Verdansk that doesn't fit that mantra. The first thing that's always worth talking about, because this is something that's going to change in mobile, and it's something that's going to change if Warzone comes back with Verdansk in the official version, is open space. Now look, I'm not saying everything needs a building in a similar vein to Urzikstan, because that is definitely a formula that is a little bit love-hate with some people, but the general open space format of Verdansk is not something that would work in the current day. There are far too many plots of land throughout the entirety of the map where the map is just open. The rotation from stadium, for example, towards military base, the rotation from pretty much anywhere towards prison, parts of farmland, the west side of the map once you go beyond the first two POIs, and even some of the rotations between the airport and the dam. Now, some of these locations have some rocks, they've got a few boulders, a few dips and dives that do make it more bearable, but for the most part, it is just flat, empty space, and you really notice this when you're playing Warzone Mobile, which is in fact a carbon copy of Verdansk. Now, the answer here is fairly simple. Not everything needs to have caves, not everything needs to have hard cover with rocks and stones, but generally, micro cover is the way to go here. Now, changing the POIs radically is probably something I think the devs will likely avoid because they want to see how people react to them, except for a few buildings, which I do think will change, which we'll talk about. But they just need to add more bits of micro cover, more walkways, more walls, more vehicles that have been burnt out, more rocks and boulders. Simple things that will make the map feel more cover to cover and less like you're running through custard in open space. I think if you're somebody who does decide to play Warzone Mobile, which again is a carbon copy of the first Verdansk, you'll notice just how much of an abundance of open space there is. And whilst this is great for nice and cheap kills, the reality is, is that it doesn't fit into the current format of Warzone, where cover is king and being able to move from position to position is really important. I see this being a really big pet peeve for most people if we see the return of Verdansk, and it's something that developers could be a little bit more active with and something that I think they'll fix easier than most problems in Verdansk with just a little splash of cover here and there. There are also some segments of the map that could just be cut away entirely. Far parts towards the northeast are pretty much not used in any way, shape, or form, and the north segment between Dam and the military base is almost entirely unused. Now yes, cutting away parts of the map is probably a bad idea in the long run of things, but there are lots of ways that they could downsize and condense the map to feel it a little bit more packed in and a little less open in space. Now, I mentioned before that they're probably not going to change the POIs, but the buildings in Verdansk will likely get a makeover if it returns to the game. Now, we are very much used to much better quality of life in Urzikstan, with redeploy drones, redeploy balloons being accessible, and multiple zip lines and entryways towards any given building. And that has not been the case in Verdansk. There are lots of buildings in Verdansk with a single ladder access point, a single zip line, or just a single stairwell. And that design philosophy allows for much more camping than we see in the current game, which while some of you are probably thinking lots of people camp in Urzikstan, you would be right, but it's far more counterable in the current version of the game than it ever was in Verdansk, unless you relied entirely on killstreaks. 
Just thinking about the promenade buildings alone in Verdansk gives you good reason for why these things have to change. We're talking buildings with single stairwells and single ladder access points, no zip lines, no rotations. It just becomes very congested and very bogged down. And I think this is something that a lot of players who are newer to Warzone or players who appreciate Urzikstan for what it is will notice immediately about Verdansk is just the lack of maneuverability, the lack of outpositioning an opponent, and it's something that's going to have to change. The downtown buildings as well are absolutely worth talking about. There are entire sky blocks that just have a single zip line or a single ladder, and that does not run very well in 2024. The POIs themselves shouldn't necessarily change too radically because I think those are the important parts of the map. The airport, the stadium, the prison. Whilst little tweaks here and there could be nice to open up a few more entryways and make them a bit more playable, I wouldn't want to see them drastically change for the sake of nostalgia, even if it does play worse. Now, I personally think the stadium played better when it was open versus when it was closed, and I'm sure lots of people would agree with me on that. And I also think the prison could benefit from the Verdansk AC4 treatment, where it had a few more zip lines and a few more accessible routes. But for the most part, I think it's worth keeping these POIs at their core fairly similar to what they were when they first released. Yes, it does counter the gameplay, but there are lots of POIs like Hospital, where a few updates that don't necessarily change the design philosophy would make it fairly decent. Now, my last suggestions on this list are definitely the most radical, and it's something that I think a lot of people will probably agree with if they kind of take the rose-tinted glasses off about the dance and how it operated. The game, generally speaking, would benefit from some POIs being drastically changed. And I mean drastically changed, I mean change pretty much every single part of it. There are some of them that are iconic, downtown and airport being examples, and the promenade even has a lot of character to it. But there are lots of them that are just generally quite boring. The farmland area is pretty boring, the prison is super isolated, the quarry system is in the middle of nowhere and doesn't have any decent connectivity, and even the military base up north could do with some changes. I actually think Verdansk 84 was a refreshing uplift to how certain parts of this map worked, and honestly, in the future, once the nostalgia's worn off and people have had time to enjoy it, certain parts of it would just be better if they were redesigned. And some people are definitely going to militantly disagree with that, but for me, that's always been the case. There are just parts of a dance that don't work very well. The military base doesn't work very well. The quarry doesn't work very well. The farmland, in my opinion, is probably the worst part of the map. And if all of that was made more interesting or more connected, or just given a bit more character that made it more of a fun POI, I honestly think the map would benefit hugely on the whole. There are definitely some of you in the comments who are probably thinking, yep, yeah, there are actually a handful of areas. I'm interested to see what you think in the comment section below. So folks, that's about it for this video. We have the return of a dance, hopefully on our cards in 2024. I'm really interested to see your thoughts and feelings about the state of the dance and how you would expect to see it in 2024. Let me know in the comment section down below and I'll catch you again in the next one.